Hey there guys, Light Gamer Amaterasu here, bringing you a deck profile for my 6th place Houston, Texas Regionals, the Chaos deck. To start off, of course, I'm running the Chaos as my flag. I can only use Chaos cards. My initial hand becomes 4 cards. My initial gauge becomes 2 cards. And my initial life becomes 10. My size limit is bumped up to 99. And all size 30 or greater monsters on my field cannot be destroyed, nor have their effects nullified by card effects. My buddy, Chaos Daryl Barrick, who I will be explaining later. First off with the big man himself, Ruler of Chaos, Gear God 7. Call cost is 2 gauge. At the beginning of either player's attack phase, I can call a Chaos Monster from my hand to the field without paying the call cost, which is fantastic. It's, a, it's an amazing ability, I love it. And there's one monster that this effect is really important for. Uh, assuming you have Gear God, anyway. His other ability being Cal Strain, when he would leave the field, I can choose instead to destroy a size 3 monster on my field, and if I do, he remains on the field. He also has the Chaos Territory ability, which allows me to control up to two monsters in the center, including Gear God. Next up, three copies of the Manufactured Havoc Gear God 7. Call cost is I can put up to two monsters from my field into a soul and pay two gauge. Now, when this creature is summoned, I can get a Chaos Monster from my drop zone back to the field without paying the call cost, which is amazing assuming I have Chaos Osiris or Daryl Burke on my in my drop zone, meaning I can activate their abilities when they hit the field. This gear god, instead of Chaos Strain, has Soul Guard, and he also has the Chaos Territory ability. One Control Armament Gear God 7, call cost is 2 gauge. When he destroys an opponent's monster or deals damage to the opponent, I can destroy a monster on their field, which running him at 1, it, I run him at 1 because he's easily searchable by launch the auto deity, and I will most likely draw into him. Now this card is really useful for destroying monsters who have soul guard and he proved to be really useful when I fought Cosmo Dragoons getting rid of Bradbury and Clark all in one attack. Next up one of the strongest monsters in the deck, Chaos Adel Diablos. Call cost is putting the top two cards of my deck into a soul and paying three gauge. Now the thing is with him if he has no soul, he gets an additional plus 2,000 power, defense, and an additional critical. And as well as he cannot be destroyed, nor bounce back to the hand by my opponent's card effects. Which is really nice, especially against Toilet. Unfortunately for me, I really didn't hit Adel Diablos that much for it to matter in that matchup, but oh well. Other abilities include Triple Attack, Soul Guard, and a lifelink of 3 which for his abilities that lifelink is well worth it and the triple attack is an amazing soul board wipe. And now finally on to my buddy Chaos Daryl Barrick. When he enters the field I'm allowed to look at the top three cards of my deck, add one to my hand without revealing to the opponent and putting the rest in the drop zone. Now, putting the rest in the drop zone is really useful considering I have cards like a Ruler's Privilege and Manufactured Gear God. And not only is he really useful for the Chaos, he's very much useful for the rest of Darkness Dragon World. Next up is for Chaos Osiris. When he enters the field on my left or right, and if I have a monster in the center, I get one gauge and I draw one card, which, again, using a ruler's privilege or the manufactured gear god, calling him for free and then proceeding to get a gauge and a draw is really nice, as well as having a 5k monster on my field. Next up to Chaos Tartaros. Call cost is putting the top card of my deck into a soul and paying two gauge. His counter ability is that I can choose a monster on my opponent's field. I can discard a card and if I do, 
it is destroyed and its abilities once return. Now, he is extremely useful for getting rid of just attacking monsters and monsters I really don't want to see on the field. For example, Gallows Demento. Two Chaos Sekitetsu. When he enters the field, I can discard a card from my hand. If I do, I get a gauge and I draw a card, which is really nice for cycling. And again, it also puts cards into the drop zone for later pickup by Gear God or Ruler's Privilege. Two Chaos Aquario. When he enters the field, I put the cards from the top of my deck into my gauge equal to the number of monsters other than him on the field. Which, his non-chaos version is really underwhelming because the max amount of gauge you're going to get off that is 2. Using Aquario, the, the chaos version, calling him or reviving him is really nice because it's a potential plus 3 to the gauge. And next, a 1 of inverse second Omni Demon Lord Death Asmodai. Call cost is 2 gauge. Now, not only is he really useful for being a size 3 with 3 crit and penetrate, but when he's destroyed, I put the top 3 cards of my deck into the drop zone, and I proceed to call monsters from among them onto my field without paying their call cost. Meaning, I can call Gear God and Adel Diablos without paying their call costs, so Adel Diablos will immediately come out as a 9-2-9. And a neat little combo with this is that Gear God's Chaos Drain ability specifies destroy a size 3. Death Asmodai's ability activates upon destruction, meaning I can grab more monsters if I really needed to to keep Gear God on the field. On to spells, two electrification. I can only cast it if I have four or more monsters in my field. I put the top card of my deck into my gauge, I gain a life, and I draw two. Now I run this card at two because it is really, really bricky, because a majority of the time you might not have the required monsters on the field or you see it in your opening hand. Another draw spell, three of one who comes from Havoc. I can only cast this card if I have two or more chaos on my field. For one gauge, I draw two cards. Now this card, like any draw two spell, is really useful, but it has the potential to be bricky, which is why I only run it at three, since it is a once per turn. Next up, for a ruler's privilege, I can only cast this card if I have three or more size three or greater monsters on my field. I can choose to activate one of the following two effects. I can choose a card other than a ruler's privilege from my drop zone, add it to my hand. And counter, I stand a size three or greater monster on my field. Now, I've n I don't remember ever using that counter effect in the tournament. But I definitely remember using that first effect to grab stuff from the drop zone because it is an extremely useful skill and it allows me to bring back stuff like my impact, electrification, one who comes from havoc, and stuff I can call out with Gear God like Adel Diablos. Next up, four of launch the auto deity. I put up to one size three or greater monster from my deck into my hand, shuffle my deck. It is a once per turn ability, and like Dragon Iron. And Dragon's Y, I only start with four cards in my hand. Launch the Auto Deity helps me bring out Gear God, despite me not having six, starting off with six. Next up is Chaos Defensor. I can only cast this card on an attack on my opponent's turn, and if I have a size three or greater monster in my center, it nullifies the attack. It's a basic attack null. Of course, you gotta have it. Four of another attack null chaos wall, barrier of havoc. I can only cast this card on an attack on my opponent's turn, and if I have two or more chaos on my field, counter, nullify the attack, and I gain a gauge. The gain ga the gain a gauge is really useful. And finally, two of the impact force global shutdown. I can only cast this card if my opponent has five or less life. I pay two gauge and I deal damage to the opponent equal to the number of crits that are in my that my monsters have on my center. This has come. This it's a really useful card 
it's come in handy during the tournament, especially against Thunder Empire, where I can manage how much life they're at so that bots won't have his, re his life requirements met, and I can finish him off before he can do anything on the next turn. Now, onto the sideboard. Three, Merciless Pressure. I discard a th size three or greater monster from my hand. I destroy a card on the field. Now, I have this card in the sideboard because of things like Death Count Requiem, assuming they don't have Gale Hawken, and Toilets. Now, the only matchup that I ever sided this in was against Toilets, and the one game where I did see it, I could not use it as it was the only card in my hand, so the, the usability is eh, kind of questionable, but I like to have it just in case. Next up, two soul reset. I can only cast it if I have three or more monsters on my field. Put all souls from a card on my opponent's field into the drop zone. If one or more was put there, I draw a card. I cited to sin just in case of the Death Count Requiem matchup and or Athra. And the only game where I did end up citing it in was against Kaiserion in the first round. Next up, two Chaos Spirit Beat. When he link attacks with another monster, I choose a monster or an item on my field, and for the turn, it gets plus 3,000 power and penetrate, and he has penetrate naturally. I cited him just in case of Athera, which I never went against, so... And finally, one more Chaos Tartaros, just in case if I really, really want to see him for that monster destruction. And that's all for this deck profile. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that I can make top 8 again in the next event.